This is Consenting Adults with Lena Wynn. So they literally showed up with this huge duffel bag full of toys. And, <laughs> Which uh, apparently was only a sampling of their collection. Right. She's, yeah, she <laughs> said, well, we, we narrowed it down to our favorites. And I was like, holy shit, I don't even want to know. Well, my guests today are a couple in their early 50s uh, who three years ago accidentally fell into swinging after being monogamous for 25 years. They started recording themselves talking about their experiences. So after coming back from a date or an event or a party, they would record themselves. And so now they have a podcast that's going to be different from other podcasts in that they're able to play that raw audio uh, to bring back the experience and really listen to what it was like right after it happened. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Let's meet them and find out how this accident happened. Marina and her husband Tristan are here. So you've been together for a long time and you were monogamous for 25 years. Yes. Uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> The short version of the story is that we actually were uh, going out to dinner with a couple that lived in our neighborhood that we've been friends with for a couple of years, and we had just never gone out to dinner or anything with them. We didn't really talk about much about swinging or lifestyle stuff then. We weren't into it. We didn't know anything about it. But uh, but the conversation had a sexy undertone to it. And so there was some alcohol involved. And we were just having a really good time. But we had such a great time. We said, well, let's go out again. So we planned a second date to go out to dinner with them. And at this point in time, we... Um, went out with them and things turned very sexy in our conversations. And uh, there was a little bit more alcohol involved and we went dancing and things just kind of, kind of took a turn. And the husband of the other couple leaned over and kissed me on the dance floor. And I said, Oh goodness, that's unusual. <laughs> and so I said, well, we, you know, I don't, I don't know what, you know, what you're thinking. And so he said, Oh gosh, that's okay. Here, let's go back over to meet Tristan and my wife. And so he said to his wife, you need to take her to the restroom. You two ladies need to go to the restroom. <laughs> so as ladies often do, I said, okay. So we went to the re restroom and the wife turns to me and she says, well, it's okay with me if it's okay with you. And I said, it's okay with me if it's okay with you, but I didn't know what I was agreeing to. <laughs> I just said, well, okay. wait a second. Wait a second. So it's okay with her husband. It's okay with her and it's okay with you. How did you know that it would be okay with your husband? Because <laughs> I've known him long enough to know that <laughs> <laughs> that, that was not going to be a problem. And I was right. Yeah, I'm, I was, I'm pretty I was easy. Right. In all the, the years that you've been together, had you ever discussed this kind of thing with each other? Like, how did you know he would be okay? Yeah, we had from time to time, but not not in any kind of serious way. And typically it would be, you know, if we were watching something on TV or watching a movie and we would see, you know, something sexy and we would say, oh, that would be really fun to, um, you know, to just kind of try something new and spice things up a little bit. And at one point, Marina had seen a an HBO real sex special that was about a resort in the Caribbean, which we presume is Hedo, knowing more now than we did then. And I had gone to bed. She woke me up in the morning and attacked me and said, you got to see this and, <laughs> and we got to go to this place. And at the, at the time, we were in our early 20s and it just started dating and had no money. And the last thing we were going to do is go to, to Jamaica on a sex vacation things like that over the years, every couple of years, something would come up, it would spark a little conversation and a little interest, and then it would just go away. But there, it was always in the background. Uh -huh. Now, was it was it just purely fantasy? Because I mean, I've talked to some couples where you may fantasize about it, but when it gets right down to it, a lot of husbands aren't okay watching their wife have sex with someone else. Yeah. And, and honestly, I didn't know whether I would be okay with it either until it actually happened. And turns out that I'm quite okay with it, <laughs> but um, but no, but you're absolutely right. I mean, it, you, you really can't know until until you're actually experiencing it. Okay, so uh, take me back to that night. So you're you're in the ladies' room. Uh, everyone seems to be okay with it. Then what happened? Well, then we went back out onto the dance floor, and I did not get a chance to talk to Tristan at all. So we continued on, and but Tristan saw what was going on, and so he uh, decided he would 
kiss the wife and she was accommodating and she was, uh, you know, very okay with that. And how are you with it? Oh, I was fine again, because it it really is bizarre. And I do not recommend that, <laughs> by the way, I do not recommend this for most couples. This is not right. something you should do without talking about it first. We have been together for a very long time and know each other very well. And and we knew this couple very well. And so things just fell into place very easily for us. Had it been a different couple or a different situation, it, we probably, this would not have happened. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we went back into, like I said, back out of the dance floor. And um, we just decided to kind of kiss. And there was some hot, steamy Latin dancing and some touching. And, and it carried over into the Uber ride home. We had taken an Uber. And so we just let it kind of unfold and do its thing. And Tristan and the wife were in the back of the Uber and the husband and I were in the middle. And so Tristan kind of kept an eye and he figured he, that he could do whatever I did so that that way he <laughs> couldn't get in trouble because <laughs> he said, yep. well, if you, you know, put your hand on his leg, I could put my hand on her leg. And he knew he couldn't get in trouble for it. So he Wait, was it a long ride home or was this a short trip? Uh, no, it was like 40 minutes or so. Yes. It was like high schoolers in the back of a van making out. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there was a little bit of alcohol involved and our neighbors had to get up at like 630 in the morning. So that was it. The night was over. There was no, yes, that was some hot and heavy petting and, and kissing and things like that in the car, but it, there was nothing going to happen beyond that. So we walked home. We walked down the street and we we're like, what was that? What happened? Like, what are we, <laughs> what are we do? We said, do you think that they're swingers? And, and we talked about it. They still hadn't told us. Right. And, well, wait a second. We, what, what was your first clue, Marina? <laughs> Hello. We, you know what? I still we still didn't know because yeah, we, didn't know. we didn't know any di we didn't know anything. We didn't know words to use. We didn't know what people would say. We didn't know it, had they done that before. They had never told us that they had special friends with benefits that lived mm -hmm. in their neighborhood before where they lived from years ago. And so we didn't know anything. And we kept saying, no, no, this couple is, they're too, you know, square. They're like us. They're like nerdy square people <laughs> like this. That's not who swingers are. I swear. We still did not know after that, that date until we then said we connected a couple of days later and I kind of took the bull by the horns. And I said, hey, that was really hot. We should do that again. And so we um, so we got, we said, we'll go ahead and we'll have dinner again. And that's where things kind of came out that when we started talking about it, they started using words that, that we didn't understand, like talking about, actually, they asked us, what are your rules about playing? And Again, this is this is how Marina gets everybody in trouble. I said, I don't know. What are your rules? <laughs> and she said, Well, we don't do this. You know, we don't play in separate rooms. And I said, Oh, us either. I had no idea what that meant. Yeah, we I never, just agreed. We never have. Yeah, whatever she said, I just said, Oh, yeah, that sounds like what we would do. <laughs> and I and I texted Tristan and I said, Holy shit, they're swingers. And I just agreed to everything. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what I've agreed to, but guess what? Because in like three weeks, we now have to figure this out. We had a three-week window to figure out what the hell I had agreed to do. And uh, and that's how it started. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So we we went on a crash course um, listening to podcasts. We did. And, and, and I had actually been listening to podcasts previous to this, but uh, I never told Marina about it because in my mind, there was no point. Um, because I didn't think she would be interested in this. I listen, I have about an hour commute each way to work to and from. And so I listened to like uh, a couple of other lifestyle podcasts. And finally, I just stopped because it became too frustrating for me because I thought there's no way that my <laughs> wife would ever be interested in this lifestyle. So I'm just torturing myself. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm just going to drop this and, and not even talk to her about it. And so I, I, so the point being, I did know a little bit and I had more of a, of a background in terms of just, you know, basic knowledge of terminology and, but, and yeah. uh, then, then Marina did. But so when she said things to me, like, oh, our, this, the woman and the couple said that they don't take one for the team, I actually knew what that meant, you know, which basically mm -hmm. means, you know, when one, when one half of the couple is not interested in the other, you don't just forge ahead for the benefit of, you know, of the other things right. like that. I, at least I had a rudimentary knowledge, but. 
Um, not I enough, didn't know not anything, to, and I just agreed to it all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when and hey, where. I want you in my poker game, Marina. <laughs> I know. I know. I, that would be a very smart of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so you like you know you you crammed and tried to learn as much as you can before this date that you had with this couple. Take me to that night. Well, we did. We had about three weeks. We crammed. We got a hotel and we went out to dinner beforehand and we're going out to dinner and we realized that the connection that Tristan and the wife had was not there Hmm. this particular evening. The husband and I always had been very flirty with each other. There had always been like this teasy thing going back and forth and, but there for whatever reason that night, the, the hotness, the intensity was gone and we didn't know what to do. Right. Yeah, we were we were not feeling it. And, uh, mm. and so, you know, we didn't have the ability at the time to, you know, kind of say, all right, time out, let's talk. Or, you know, t- we need to break so that I can talk to Marina and see what we're going to do. We didn't know any of that because we this, this was all completely brand new to us. Right. Well, we had crash course about it. And we knew how to do all the step-by-step checklist stuff, but we didn't get to the part where it said if there's going to be no connection right. between <laughs> everybody, what do, you do? what do you do we had done we done all the other leg work about how it was supposed to all happen and all the conversation you're supposed to have with each other and and the other couple and you're supposed to check in and you only move at the pace of the slowest person and all this stuff and we never dreamed that there would not be the connection between tristan and the wife and it wasn't hugely obvious it was just kind of something that something was off Right. Yeah. That we that we knew was going on. But we, again, not knowing any differently, we forged ahead. Mm-hmm. That's what the date was all about. It was setting up this play date. And so um, Tristan I, took one for the team. <laughs> he, he did. Actually, I think the wife, the other the I, other wife took the one for the team. What do you there's just no, no, there's no telling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then yeah. what so get what happened? Get to okay, hold on. So when you have dinner before you know you're gonna have sex with people, do you like at dinner, do you make decisions like, I'm not gonna eat that, that's too garlicky? Oh, absolutely. Yes, you always watch what you're gonna eat. Watch I always watch how much I drink. Mm-hmm. So I don't wanna be accidentally drunk. And you don't realize it, you know, because it's a social thing and you're just used to drinking. So I always watch what I drink. I watch what I eat. I don't get anything real heavy. Okay. So you ate a healthy dinner. (laughs) And and then what? So we got back to the hotel and uh, we started talking about playing. We, again, having read and having listened to all these podcasts, we had these rules that we thought we were supposed to follow. So we started to talk about it's everybody still good to play and things like that. And they started telling us what they normally like. They knew we had never played with anybody before. They knew we really weren't swingers. They were very experienced. They've been in the lifestyle for about 10 years. I think so. Yeah. And, um, were very active in where they'd lived before. They had just moved to the area about three years ago. And so they knew that we didn't know anything. And then when we talked about, well, what do you like and what do you don't like? She started talking about all this really crazy shit. And (laughs) I think, and I'm sure my eyes got as big as saucers. I think Tristan turned like ghostly white because he's like, how the fuck am I supposed to be with this woman? Like I've only been with one woman for 28 years and I'm supposed, and she started talking about, what's she talking about? Well, first of all, she started out by talking about uh, flogging and paddling and oh. all, all this BDSM stuff that we had no knowledge of whatsoever. And then she started talking about how she wanted to try fire play. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And to this day, I don't really, I'm not sure that I understand what that is, <laughs> even with all the experience in the interim. We actually have an episode on fire play. Um, and like, I didn't understand it either. But you guys have probably been in the lifestyle, and it doesn't take that long before you realize there really is something for everyone. Oh, yeah. There's a kink for everyone, right? There's a fetish for it. There's just, like, if you can think about it, it turns somebody on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, So, wow. So she came at you with all this heavy-hitting stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was terrified (laughs) because here, (laughs) you know, know, my style is completely opposite of that. And for, at that point, 25 years – 
I had been with one woman and one woman who enjoys very slow and passionate, loving sex. And that's what I, that's my nature. And that's what I knew how to do. And here I'm <laughs> with a new woman for the first time who wants me to essentially twist her nipples off and hit her <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, drip candle wax all over. And, and oh, she didn't go that far. No, that but that was night, something, but... <laughs> that was something that she said she liked. And so my thought was there's no way in hell that I'm going to be able to satisfy this woman. And so for somebody who is, and I'm very, very um, uh, concerned about satisfying my partners. And so I was very worried that I'm not going to be able to, you know, to do what she wants me to do. Mm -hmm. And if those are the, the, you know, the parameters and that's the bar, then no. Right. <laughs> well, and we actually, like... we even said, I, because I, I'm really not kidding you. My eyes were huge. Tristan had turned white <laughs> as a sheet. <laughs> And because I could see it going through his head, like, holy shit, what am I going to do? So I even said, look, we don't, we, that's beyond where we are. You know that we don't know anything and that's beyond where we are. So we don't have to do this. I mean, I was ready to pull the plug because mm -hmm. I thought, holy shit, this is not going to go well. And after, you know, so she was saying all that stuff and I said, look, we don't have to do this. And she turned around and she said, nope, let's get to it. And she like <laughs> clapped her hands and started taking off Tristan's shirt. And I said, Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently she was just laying out her wish list, but that wasn't what necessarily had to happen that evening. So, mm. so we forged yeah. ahead and, and got on with it. And it was, um, it was not great. No, it was it not a great experience. No, um, we didn't know anything. So I think the husband had some well, back up a little bit and, okay. and talk about the toys. Wait, did someone say toys? Okay, the place to go is adamandeve.com. Then at checkout, just put in my name, L-E-Y-N-A, and you're going to get 50% off uh, any single item, just about anything that they sell on the website, and you'll get free shipping and a bunch of free gifts as well. So adamandeve.com, put my name at checkout, L-E-Y-N-A. Happy shopping. They brought this huge duffel bag full of sex toys, vibrators and dildos, and I don't even know what was in there because I didn't look. And wow. so she had jokingly, or she had said, do you want us to bring our sex toys? And I said, okay, sure. I don't have any because we don't, at the time, really didn't <laughs> have any toys and I actually still don't. But anyways, so I said, okay. So they literally showed up with this huge duffel bag full of toys. And, <laughs> Which um, apparently was only a sampling of their collection. Right. She's, <laughs> yes. She said, well, we, we narrowed it down to our favorites. And I was like, holy shit, I don't even want to know. And so, yeah, so they had this huge duffel bag full of toys. We start playing and she tells the husband, oh, get the magic wand and use that on Marina. And I'm like, magic wand, what's that? So I don't know, Lena, if you're familiar with what the magic wand is, but it's um, a super high powered vibrator. There's two versions. There's the battery version and then the Mac Daddy industrial plug it into the wall. The lights <laughs> dim when you turn it on version. <laughs> And that's what they had. And they thought this would be great to try on Marina. Let's see what happens. And so sure enough, he whips out the magic wand, plugs it into the wall. The lights dim. The whole hotel probably went dark and brown for a minute. <laughs> Turns this thing on, touches it barely to my clitoris. And I probably thought flew three feet off the bed. My eyes rolled back into the back of my head. I couldn't talk. Like it was. <laughs> well, wait a second. Was it good? Was it good or was it too much? It was a, it was a lot. It was intense, but my body was like, my brain was like, what the fuck is that? Turn that off. And my body just was like, oh, hell no, this is amazing. Yeah. Shut up brain. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> Keep it I, I think I orgasm probably very fast. Like I, it was so crazy, something I had never felt before. You know, men kind of get a bad rap. I think that most men do want to please their partners in bed, but some men just need a little help. A company called Promescent is doing just that with sexual wellness products for both men and women. The female arousal gel helps get her in the mood, helps warm her up, and Promescent's Delay Spray is helping men last longer in bed. And this isn't just for men with PE. There are a lot of men who are using this recreationally. These products are clinically tested and recommended by doctors. I mean, my friends are actually thanking me for telling them about this. And as a Consenting Adults listener, you can get free gifts with your order by going to promescent.com and using the code word LENA. 
That's P R O M E S C E N T dot com and use the code word L E Y N A for free gifts that include lubricant and condoms. Promescent dot com. Let's close that orgasm gap. Push me right over the edge. And Wait, so I, you've, yeah. have, you've never used a vibrator before? I have used a vibrator before, but not this industrial strange oh. <laughs> magic wand. Like I didn't know they could be that powerful. Yeah. And I don't even know what setting they had it on. They just turned it on. He touched me. I lost consciousness practically. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Except nice. for oh, my, my whole body turned bright red mm-hmm. because they were like, oh my God, she's turning bright red. And and Tristan said, oh, no, that's normal. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Like if I, I get so flushed. And so, yeah, I practically was partially paralyzed. So that was the one, that was a good thing that did come out Mm -hmm. of that. And, but I will tell you to this day, we still do not own one of those because I'm afraid I will hurt myself with it. (laughs) (laughs) I have had the pleasure of using them a couple of times and some play partners that we have, have them. And that's enough. I don't want to get addicted to the magic wand because I have a feeling that would be (laughs) a very a bad thing to happen. You may not be able to come back from one. Right, exactly. Like how right? can you have, yes, how can a man's tongue feel as good as this exactly. industrial strength? Yeah, thing. So I let that be a treat for when we're out in other places or with our other lover. So mm-hmm. meanwhile, while you're having like a seizure, what's going on <laughs> with Tristan? Well, I was with the wife and um, I, you're doing what I typically would do, which is going very slow and being very sensual. I love to kiss and I love to spend a lot of time you know, kissing a woman. I love to spend a lot of time caressing her neck, earlobes, shoulders. I have this whole you know, pattern that I, that I enjoy. And probably 10 minutes into that, she said, Tristan, I'm not going to break. So... <laughs> <laughs> I interpreted that as, okay, I need to step this up a little bit. And meanwhile, and actually Marina heard that on the other side of the bed. She said, that's my fault. That's what I like. <laughs> that's how I trained them, basically. That's true. <laughs> so I, you know, stepped it up a little bit and started going down on her. I started playing with her nipples and she likes really, really rough, intense nipple play, which I had never experienced with a woman before because Marina doesn't like that or at the time didn't like that. You know, I was kind of out of my comfort zone from start to finish with this. And mm. then I started going down on her, which I love. And I can spend just, you know, hours doing that. And she liked it, but she wanted to get to the toys. Well, and hello. So, yeah. And magic so. Magic wand, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, share well, love. But before the magic wand, she brought out something that uh, it was a pussy pump. And which to me, it looked like the oxygen mask that drops down out of the, the overhead compartment on an airplane if there's an emergency. And so it literally is like a little triangular clear plastic thing that you put on her vulva and then you pump it up. And it, the theory is that it draws all the blood and uh, it makes her more sensitive. What it really did though, was just kind of make everything kind of puffy and disturbing. <laughs> and so it really wasn't very sexy to me. And so but she, she, she liked it. So I did that. Oh and- my gosh. You know what I'm, in, I'm, I'm imagining in my head right now? And I'm sure you guys have probably seen it. Like on social media with all the silly women who would pump up their lips. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they do it falsely with that thing. And it looks ridiculous. It looks like a monkey's ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what I was looking at there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gosh, you got for I got to I got to give you guys credit for like hanging with it because especially for newbies to kind of, you know, go into it and see heavy artillery <laughs> it would right. scare most people. I mean, I'm surprised you were able to get it up. I no, I did. I was fine. Um <laughs> and actually I'm not sure if I did I use so we had been on a cruise um probably a couple Actually, no, that was before the cruise. So I, I didn't have any Viagra. I, now, when I'm we're with a new couple or in a group setting, I always take a little bit of Viagra. And I don't think that I did, though, for that because know. we hadn't been know. on our cruise yet. So the first time I'd ever gotten it was, you know, at a Mexican pharmacia <laughs> on a cruise. <laughs> and uh, so, but that was, yeah, this was pre-cruise. And so, yeah, I went you in guys, there. You are so old school. You guys are so old school. 
<laughs> right? You're going to go to Mexico and yeah. get prescriptions at a pharmacy. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> we are, the, I tell you, we're like the prudiest swingers on the I, I always say I'll I'm speak the most, for yourself. Oh, well, I know. I do still jokingly <laughs> joke that I'm the prudiest vanilla swinger that there is. Yet I talk about it, my sex life with everybody on the planet who wants to listen, but I still, <laughs> I'm still a prude and I still get shocked by some of these things. But, but that's really like how that whole evening went. And it was all these crazy experiences. And we ended up not even, I ended up not having sex with him because he did have issues. Mm -hmm. And so it was all toy based and we stopped when we were done playing, we thought we were taking a break. And so, cause all the podcasts we had listened to talked about, you take a break and then you go back in for round two. And so we said, this is good. We were at a good breaking point. There had been some oral sex and uh, that was good. And I think, did you actually even have sex with her? No, I did not. That's why. Yeah. yeah, That's why. Cause they didn't, it was all just oral sex. So it was a lot of soft. She went went down on me and, uh, and she finished me that way. It, yeah. We thought that was round one, and then we're going to stop and have a drink and some snacks and things and all this stuff, and we'll go into round two. And we and finish. that's where the good stuff will happen. Yeah, and then we're <laughs> going to be really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so round one was over, and they got up and got dressed and said, all right, we'll see you guys at you know back in the neighborhood. We were like, <laughs> wow. Like, well, what? Yeah. And so they said, yep. And uh, they cleaned up their stuff, packed everything up. And she says, oh, if we forget anything, just bring it by the house. And we were like, oh, my gosh. OK. <laughs> and the, so we started to get dressed and they said, well, you don't have to get dressed. You're you're this is your hotel room. And I said, well, it's only like 11 o'clock. We're probably going to go out and find other people or something. <laughs> <laughs> and so they left. And we stood in the doorway of the hotel and we looked at each other and we started laughing and we said, that was horrible. Let's do that again. Uh, Mm. Well, but you wanted to do it again because you knew there was potential, right? Right. We knew that we were in at that point, even though this was not the experience that we had wanted or planned for or envisioned. None of that mattered. What really matters is that we had, notwithstanding, we had a great time and we Mm. wanted to do it again and we wanted to do it right. And part of the thing was for us, and we talk about this often with other couples, is that when we were deciding whether or not this was going to be something we wanted to look into and we were listening to other podcasts, we talked about it a lot. And it was almost like our sexual fantasy play. We really were hot and heavy going into talking about swinging and then starting swinging. And then in our early journeys, you know, early adventures, that it's really hot. And we shared a lot of those experiences. So for that three weeks leading up to this event, which we thought was going to be phenomenal, we had really connected, reconnected ourselves. Mm-hmm. We were talking about everything. We were so excited. And we really worked on making sure that our communication was going to be top notch when we decided to enter the lifestyle because we swore that would be the one thing that we had to make sure that we had to talk to each other about everything, no matter Mm -hmm. how painful it was going to be. Because we knew we were going to trip up and and there would be landmines ahead. And sure enough, we've hit a lot of them. But because we made that commitment from the get-go to each other that we, no matter how hard it was or how painful it was going to be when we hit those landmines to talk about it. So we really laid a lot of foundational work before the play date because we yeah. had those three weeks kind of in between. Mm-hmm. So it turned into a great, a great experience for that. But then also we were super hot and heavy into each other because it was really just sexy as fuck. And we were like, oh hell yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. So it, that's why we knew that even though the experience was terrible, we knew this is where we wanted to go for, mm-hmm. for ourselves. Yeah. We had found the right direction to go in. It sounds like you had a you already had a good marriage, but it sounds like this might have enhanced it. Oh absolutely. Absolutely. We talk about it a lot. And we've had our ups and downs like everybody else. When you're married for as long as we are, you know, there's been times where like, are we sure this is where we want to go? Do we want to be together, you know, in the end? And you go through that. You can't meet someone when you're 23 years old. You're not the same person that, you know, at 50 anymore. And so we had been through a lot of those things and, and no, we wanted to be together and, and this wasn't even on the radar at those times, but certainly for us, because of the fact that we made it so important that our communication stayed the primary focus and that we are each other's primary focus. And we know that in 30 years, 
because we're going to go 30 years with this. So we're in our 50s. <laughs> It'll be 80. We'll be in our 80s. That'll work. Yeah, All right. So in 30 to 35 <laughs> years, when this is finally subsiding a little bit, uh, it it will still be the two of us sitting together on that front porch talking about all of our dirty all little adventures yeah. Did, yeah and and in the end that's who that's who we're going to end up being with so mm-hmm. right now um you know we know that's where our safety and security comes in and and we've had a lot of experiences in the last couple of years and we know we're at the tip of the iceberg there is yeah. so, like, as you said there's so much out there that we thought we would never ever ever do and accidentally keep screwing up and and getting exposed to things and trying different things. And it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. It's it's just been an amazing adventure. What have you found that has been something that you're so glad you took the leap because you're able to do this? Do you have anything that stands out? One thing I felt like I didn't want would be having, you know, being involved in a gang bang or something that was anonymous, like where we didn't know the people at all. And we accidentally stepped into a situation where we were in a playroom with um, a gentleman. There were three of us. We were having our, a threesome. And the gentleman that was with us, our playmate, happened to interact with another couple. We didn't know who they were. And the five of us started playing. And that, to me, was so unexpected and so organic. And I probably never in a million years had we said, let's walk in and find a random couple to fuck. I would have said, oh, hell no, that's not how I roll. But because it happened the way that it happened, it was one of the hottest things. And I still don't know their names. And it was one of the hottest. <laughs> yeah, it was. Mm. And I said, don't tell me your name. Back up. I know. I, well, I said, to, I said to him, I said, don't tell me your name or something. Like I even yeah. said, don't say your name because I didn't want it. It was like, I don't want to know. I just want to just fuck you. And then it's just going to be this crazy anonymous experience. And, and it was so hot. And I mean, we've done a lot of the other things too that are very hot. But that's the one thing that truly, truly stands out in my mind because I was so against it. I was like, I would never just walk into a room and, and, fuck somebody else yeah. that I didn't know, but uh, I changed my Tristan? position. <laughs> um, well, I won't, I wouldn't say that I would be completely against what actually happened here where I wound up with three women at a house party. Um, un- yeah. <laughs> unlike Marina saying going in, Oh, I would never say okay to that. Well, I would <laughs> be all over that. Uh, it certainly wasn't planned, but it just kind of happened. Uh, but that's, you know, as far as specific instances, that was for me an incredibly hot, as far as just general things, and I think you know, Marina touched on it a little bit, just being open to new experiences and finding your way in the lifestyle and allowing things to come to you and being open to change. When we first entered the lifestyle, our conception was that we would be just with couples and it would be uh, you know, us with another couple, we'd be swapping, and that would be it. Pretty early on in the process, we were approached by a lot of single men that wanted to have three ways with us. And so that was something that we explored very early on and that is pre-COVID, uh, you know, a very important part of our play style, which we very much enjoy. I had no idea how this was going to go until it actually happened. It turns out that it's really hot and I really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Have either of you had bisexual experiences? Um, I think it's pretty common in the lifestyle that women are exploring their bisexuality. I thought that was going to be awesome. I, whenever we had watched porn before we got into the lifestyle, that always turned me on seeing two women with each other. Porn to me is always very contrived and acted out and just not natural. And so, but the women always tended to be so tender with each other. And I really liked that. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to explore my latent, you know, bisexuality. And when we got into the lifestyle and started playing, I realized, no, I really am not bisexual at all. I enjoy sex and I enjoy being touched and caressed and um, made love to and fucked and all the things in between. And a lot of times it could be a man or a woman. I don't really enjoy being with a woman. I don't enjoy going down on a woman. I've tried it. I have had, there is one woman that I, that I'm more attracted to. And so maybe that's what it is. It's maybe more of a, do I have a connection with this person? But I, I would not call myself bisexual. I don't tell people that I am. I don't, I think that's misleading. Mm -hmm. Uh, If, if a woman wants to kiss me or caress my breasts, or a lot of times when we're having sex and we're in a group play situation, um, to me, sucking on another woman's nipples or kissing her is part of the play. It's part of 
the excitement of bill of the buildup. If a boob is there and not, we're moving around and not, I'll, I'll suck a boob. Yeah. I mean, I, a, a woman's boob, a man's nipple, whatever, I'll do it. I'll kiss anybody. I love kissing, but I don't get the same emotion. I don't get the same physical excitement that when a man does it mm-hmm. or when a man touches me or puts his fingers inside my pussy or, or things like, or goes down on me. When a woman does it, it's just not the same for me. It's, it's amazing mm-hmm. that that would be such a different, a different thing. I thought it was just going to be awesome. I could double the people I could sleep with. But, <laughs> but I just, you know, I enjoy it, but it's just not my, my preferred method. Mm-hmm. So, and Tristan, you're, you're straight. Yes. And to be clear, especially when we're having MFMs, there's going to be some contact here and there. It's, it's incident, incidental contact, uh, friendly fire, I think is, you know, how some people <laughs> refer to it. And, you know, that's fine. That's just part of it. And that doesn't bother me. I'm not biphobic. Are you saying then, because there are so many uh, women who are bisexual in in the lifestyle, that there's actually a place for you if you're just straight people who like to have sex with other people, that you don't have to have bisexual play? Oh, absolutely. Again, I think there's a lot of women that are bisexual and that's what they're exploring. But everybody that I've always run into... If you say, no, that's not my bag, it's not an issue. It's usually not an issue at all. We've actually played with quite a few couples where the women are not bisexual. So I don't, I think it's not. Sometimes it's almost a relief, I think, because there's, there there really is an expectation, I think, on the part of a lot of people, mostly men, that that's what they want to see. And I think that it's more common. You know, I think that women certainly are more open to it than men are, but I think it's also very common for women to just, you know, yeah, if it comes along, fine. And But it's it's also situational. No pressure. Yeah, exactly. And I think mm-hmm. that uh, we I've actually run into some people and some of the women are nervous that they have to be bi. And I think it's so important to be able to explain that the lifestyle is what you make it. Everything is a spectrum and what, how much you play is a spectrum, how much you, the different experiences you want to have, the, if you're going to get into kink, it's all a spectrum. And so it's where you are. And sometimes it changes how you feel that night. Mm-hmm. You may not feel like doing something that you did uh, you know, a week ago or a month ago. And so you just have to be respectful of that, but to understand that you still have the right to say, I'm not interested in playing. And, and it, the same thing, like Tristan just said, that if if you're not interested in someone just because she's a woman and you're a woman and you're open to being, to having a bi relationship or bi encounter, that doesn't mean that that's automatic. If I'm in a big, with a group and it's, everyone's hot and it's sexy and it's just, you know, a couple bodies and piles around you. Like I said, if there's a nipple that goes by, I'll suck it. I, you know, it's awesome <laughs> because I'm, it's exciting. And so it's, yeah. There's a real energy yeah. that, that happens in those situations. Right. So that mm-hmm. is the situation. Has it ever gone farther than that? Have there been emotions? Have you fallen in love? Are you polyamorous? I can ask more questions until you start answering. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, you have like a whole bag full of questions, don't you? <laughs> Yes, there were emotions. I actually fell in love with a, one of our play partners. And then um, Tristan was able to meet a beautiful, fabulous woman and fell in love with her. And they kind of happened almost coincidentally. Actually, mm-hmm. we were introduced to the woman from the man mm-hmm. that that I had fallen in love with. And it took a while for us to even admit that that was something that was going on. But once we, again, we talked about it very openly it's bizarre to talk to your husband about <laughs> these feelings you're having for this man, but and vice versa, because right. I had the same going in the other direction. Right. And so fortunately it kind of happened for both of us at the same time. It wasn't what they were not a couple. We didn't expect that. We didn't think that was going to happen. And again, allowing ourselves to experience that and not be afraid of it, but to go through it together mm-hmm. was amazing. And I think that one thing, when you're together for 28 years and you're in love with this person, but I'm in, I fell in love with a man that I met when I was 23. And again, we've changed, we've grown. I still love him, but there's not much that's new and fun and exciting. And that's okay because we've built an amazing, fantastic life together. But in came this woman who was you know, puppy dog eyed over him (laughs) and loved listening to all the stories and loved hearing about his background. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I've heard it a million times. (laughs) Whatever. And so it was an amazing 
wonderful thing to see. And I felt so happy for him that he got to feel this excitement about this woman who just found him incredible because he is incredible. But that newness isn't there for me anymore. We've been together for almost 30 years. I can try and fake it, but he's going to figure it out. You know, <laughs> I know all and, your tells. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly your marriage survived whatever happened. Not only that, it's we've again, it's been stronger and we've not shied away from having those feelings yeah. and and yeah. worked through that right and and have said we actually it made sex with those partners even better and then we would all play together mm-hmm. sometimes and we I mean we we made relationships out of it. Yeah. And that relationship with her has fallen by the wayside. My lover, that although I, no, I mean, I and I still it, it has it, it has and as far as intense sex is concerned, I mean, I texted with her just yesterday. That relationship is physically gone by the wayside, but we're still you know we're still connected. We're still friends. How do people accidentally find you guys? It was a joke. How do people find you guys? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you can find us on our website, accidentalswingers.com. We're on Instagram at Accidental Swingers and on any podcast platform, Accidental Swingers Podcast. And apparently not all accidents are bad. Marina and Tristan, thanks for sharing your story with us. All right, next time on Consenting Adults, although there is this push for no judgment in the lifestyle, there is still a stigma against bisexual men. Especially in the with bi males, because of the stigma, a lot of them are like, oh, I'll do everything, but no kiss. You know, I definitely don't want to kiss. And, you know, they're just, they just like the... Uh, Wait a second, the it's, the kiss, it's the kissing part that they won't do? Yeah, like that's, that's too kinky. You know? <laughs> that's next time on Consenting Adults. Mm-hmm.